intro for me. Okay. So I guess I'm the short one. I'm the one that doesn't get the chin shot, right? <laughs> Should I like angle it down? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's falling now. Okay, there we go. So now my lab can see me. Everybody's back at Cal State watching this live. So like you said, I am, my name is Michelle Stone. I am representing the laboratory of Dr. Cynthia Crawford. And today I will be talking to you about the effects of early methylphenidate exposure on cannabinoid-induced condition place preference in adult male rats. So that is a mouthful. Let's kind of break that down a little bit. So first off, what is methylphenidate? Methylphenidate is more commonly known as Ritalin. And Ritalin has been prescribed to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And this can be characterized by symptoms of inattention, inattentiveness and impulsivity. And these symptoms can be seen to persist into adulthood. However, when we look at this adult population of patients with ADHD and patients who had a diagnosis of ADHD in childhood, we find a high level of cannabis use. This psychiatric disorder reports more cannabis use than any other psychiatric disorder. So what, what is cannabis? We've talked a lot about it today. So we do know it's a psychoactive drug and it binds with high affinity to the endocannabinoid system. So we wanted to see the interaction. We know these ADHD patients took methylphenidate as kids, and we want to know if this early methylphenidate exposure is actually enhancing the rewarding properties of cannabis use in adulthood. So for our current study, we wanted to use a cannabinoid agonist, and we decided to use male sprog dolly adult rats after they'd been pretreated with methylphenidate in adolescence. So specifically, we wanted to find out if that pretreatment with methylphenidate was going to increase the rewarding properties of our cannabinoid agonist, and we use the condition place um, preference paradigm. And I always get all jumbled, so I'm going to call it CPP from now on. So like I said, we use male rats. This is preliminary findings. Um, my researchers are actually probably still running it right now as we speak. So I will be presenting data on 81 males. That gives us about five to seven rats per group. So like I said, we want to see the long-term consequences of this methylphenidate use. So we're going to pre-treat them with methylphenidate in early adolescence. So early adolescence in these male rats are considered postnatal day 21 to about 30. So within this 10-day period, we went ahead and gave them twice daily injections of methylphenidate six to eight hours apart at four dosage. So either 0, 0.5, 2, or 5 milligrams per kilogram. And like I said, we want to see what they're like in adulthood. So we're going to leave them undisturbed at this point until they reach early adulthood, which we considered around postnatal day 60. So before we start testing with condition place preference, we want to habituate the animals to the testing room because it can be a very sensitive paradigm. So for that, we did four days of handling. That's just simply taking them into the experimental room and then handling them in groups of three to four for 10 minutes per day. So quickly, what is condition place preference? Well, CPP is a paradigm that's been validated to test an animal's preference for a specific drug. Our drug in this case is a cannabinoid agonist by the name of CP55940. With this drug, we paired it to one of the sides of the room, either the black side or the white side, and paired the other side with the saline. So how does this procedure work? Well, we want to find out first if the animals have a bias to a specific side of the room. So we're going to do what's called preconditioning, where we're going to give the animal 15 minutes to free access of both sides in order to find out if the animal already has a preference to one side of the chamber. After that, we also want to introduce the cannabinoid agonist. This drug can sometimes be adversive in this anim these animals, so we wanted to introduce it before we put them in the experimental chamber. So we simply gave them the injection 30 minutes after preconditioning, and they've been returned to their home cages. Once we find out if the animal had a bias to the side, we then waited 24 hours so the drug left their system before we started conditioning them. At this point, we went ahead and we paired the drug with the side that they least preferred. We wanted to make sure that it was the effect of the drug, not the effect of the chamber that was having an, um, an effect on their preference, I should say. So we went ahead and we did five daily pairings with the drug and five daily pairings with the vehicle, um, alternatively for 10 days. After that, we waited another 24 hours to let the drugs out of their system, and then like preconditioning, we went ahead and gave them free access to both sides for another 15 minutes to find out if their preference had changed. 
So just to reiterate, we wanted to find out if this early methylphenidate exposure is going to enhance these rewarding properties. So our independent variables that we will be looking at in our graphs are that methylphenidate pretreatment and then the treatment with the cannabinoid agonist during the CPP testing. So our dependent variable, how are we going to find this out? We're going to use a preference score. So what we wanted to do is take that time they spent on the drug paired side on testing day and we're going to subtract it from the time they had spent in that non-preferred compartment on preconditioning day to see if that had actually increased their preference for that compartment. So what did we find out? Well, first off, before we even got to conditioning, we found some very interesting data with the preconditioning day. As you see on our x-axis, we have the four doses of methylphenidate, and on our y-axis, we're going to look at the time spent in seconds in the white compartment. And what we see is that the dose of 2 milligrams per kilogram and the dose of 5 milligrams per kilogram actually increase the preference for the white compartment. So we found this interesting. Usually rats are adversive to bright open spaces. So we find that the methylphenidate treatment is actually enhancing their preference for the white compartment. And this is before we've even introduced the cannabinoid drug. So what happens when we introduce the cannabinoid drug? So what we're looking at here is the data collapsed across all methylphenidates. So we have all four methylphenidate doses are included in this. And on our x-axis, we have our four doses of the cannabinoid access or a drug. And then on the y-axis, we have the preference score, which again was the time spent in that drug compared compartment subtracted from the time on the non-preferred side during preconditioning. So if you see the numbers below, that would show an aversion. That's a negative amount of seconds. And the numbers above are going to be a positive amount of seconds. So what we found collapsed across all methylphenidate dosages is that the rats actually found a preference for the 20 micrograms per kilogram dose of our cannabinoid agonist. So no matter what your pretreatment was of methylphenidate, you found, these rats found preferable the 20 microgram dose of our cannabinoid drug. So what about the methylphenidate? So in these two graphs, let's look at the left, yes, your left one first. So this is the methylphenidate collapsed across all the cannabinoid dosages. So we have that methylphenidate pretreatment across all of them, and as you can see, we have no significant interaction with our, our, our preference score. So no matter the dose of methylphenidate, we did not find that enhanced any sort of preference um, for the cannabinoid um, paired chamber on testing day. So if we look at the right pair graph, now we want to look at that interaction. Do we find that methylphenidate interacts with a specific dose of a cannabinoid agonist to increase its pre preference, to increase those rewarding properties? And like I said, this po is preliminary data and we are still collecting, but right now we do not see any significant trending that this pre-exposure pre of methylphenidate is actually causing an increase in cannabinoid preference in adulthood. So what does this all mean? So as we can say, as of preconditioning day, the pretreatment with methylphenidate is going to increase that amount of time spent in the white compartment. So we believe that methylphenidate is causing a reduction of anxiety in adulthood. Rats are not usually prone to hang out in white bright spaces. In light dark box chambers, they tend to spend most of their time in the dark side of the box. We also found that there was a preference for a cannabinoid agonist only seen at that 20 microgram dose. So no matter what your methylphenidate pretreatment was, these rats seem to like the cannabinoid agonist at this 20 microgram dose. However, there was no interaction between the pretreatment of methylphenidate and our cannabinoid agonist. So as of right now with our preliminary findings, we cannot say that methylphenidate is having a significant increase on enhancing the rewarding effects of our cannabinoid drug. So this goes along with many clinical implications. The Ritalin is a highly prescribed drug for ADHD patients. And what we have found in past research in our laboratory and other laboratories is that methylphenidate pretreatment does enhance rewarding effects of other drugs such as morphine and cocaine. So because this group of people tend to use a lot of cannabis, we wanted to see if it was the methylphenidate that was having these similar interactions. So right now we do not, are not able to say that, that, but that's good to know. Now we need to know what is causing it. So we have to look at other factors that uh, ADHD patients are dealing with that causes high cannabis use. So our future direction, of course, is going to be adding more animals to this study and then maybe looking at other paradigms such as um, self-administration. So. And I want to thank DIDARP and my lab, of course. Thank you, Michelle. Great talk. A couple, uh, one or two questions here? 
course. Why did you say of course? Because <laughs> you always have the best questions. <laughs> <laughs> so is, could there be another conclusion? So what's the difference between CP940 and, so what's in cannabis is not CP, Yes, right? this is, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, we do not have access to THC in our lab. We do not have a Schedule One license. We chose to use the CP drug because it has a high affinity for the CB1 receptors, just like THC. But it's different from THC. It is. So what we wanted to do is create a baseline. We wanted to see if the mechanisms that are involved in the endocannabinoid system are actually being enhanced and playing a role. So that way, it's kind of a foundation building to find out more information with using a drug such as THC. Because THC is a partial agonist. Exactly. So full, full agonist. agonist. So if this was to have an effect, then it would still be like, well, because THC is a partial agonist, now we have to test it on that to see if it even correlates as well. Great question. <laughs> What was the rationale to treat them initially with methylphenidate and then later on test them for cannabinoids? Well, agonist? what we find is that most ADHD patients in adolescence are treated with methylphenidate, and in adulthood, they tend to not be using their methylphenidate as much. There is a big population that uses methylphenidate as well. But you tend to, I don't want to say grow out of the symptoms, but they can per persist into adulthood. But since we know such a large population of ADHD patients are pretreated with Ritalin and adolescents, we wanted to find the long-term consequences, pretty much. And, and the other thing is, because I assume that there might be some interaction with other addictive drugs. Yes. And there are shown, mm -hmm. so maybe you can add on that. That's what I was saying. Because with that's the purpose. One of the things that you could also add is that these animals are not an ADHD not phenotype. No, they're not. So it might have this exacerbation in the model that really shows a... Yes. Has, yeah. We've been trying to um, run these studies in the SHR rats as well. So we definitely want to create this baseline and analyze what we have and see where we are at. And then that way we can implement other models and other drugs as well.